you know, one of the things that the neuroscience <coughs> does support is the power of isolation, mm -hmm. the power of chronic disconnection to really injure people. And I think, I was thinking about that this morning actually, I was thinking, you know, this, the notion that isolation is the source of mm -hmm. the greatest suffering. Mm -hmm. um, and originally we looked at it in terms of individual suffering, individual isolation, individual abuse, individual chronic disconnection. But also then to look at the way in which the culture um, isolates, mm -hmm. and I always you know, throw out the phrase, isolation is the glue that holds oppression in place. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things that's <coughs> very exciting about our work is that we started out in, thera in the therapy world, we started out mm -hmm. then taking on psychological theory, which was, you know, at the time people said, well, first of all, they ignore you, then they say you're crazy, and then they say we knew it all along. Okay. Um, but we took on um, psychological theory, both thinking that that was important for individuals, but also thinking that it was important for social policy and for cultural. Mm -hmm. I mean, the culture is partly shaped by psychological theory and vice versa. But then to sort of really continually come back to what Jean already said in her book in 1976 was the power arrangements, mm -hmm. the arrangements of dominance and subordination mm -hmm. are powerful determinants of people's well-being mm -hmm. and capacity to be fully creative and fully um, contributing in a way to the culture. So moving from separation, do it alone, if you can't do it alone you're a wimp, there's something wrong with you, into a place of celebrating the power of connection and, the, and how, you know, how pa connection can drive personal growth but also can really drive social change. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really big piece of what we're trying to bring into the world, both in your work, Maureen, with power <coughs> and your work within neuroscience. It's, it's like really getting out there and getting this message out to people in many different ways mm -hmm. so that they can hear it and use it and really participate in social action, social justice. Well, I was going to say, and to, <clears throat> to really get that, that, that culture, it's not that culture's here and neuroscience is here. Right. No, no that's it's together. Right. It's, it's that's together all together. the time. The culture is shaping our brains, our brains are in our bodies are shaping right. the culture. We're doing it all the time. It's just a constant right. dance. There, there are no scenes. Right. It's right. a so. continual interplay, and, I, and yeah. I like the fact that you said story. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah. you know, when we think about some of those traditional models, they're just stories, mm -hmm. you know, and they're stories, you know, that come from people uh, who had a lot of privilege along a lot of dimensions. Mm -hmm. And of course, in a culture that's a power over culture, one of the um, one of the prerogatives of privilege is that you get to tell the story. Yes. Right. And uh, you will get to tell the story in a way that benefits you. So one of the things that we like to say is that when we tell the story, we situate culture explicitly in the center of the story. Mm -hmm. Because culture is in the heart of all stories. Mm -hmm. But if you don't tell the truth about it, mm -hmm. if you don't say this is a cultural story, right. then you get to perpetuate a lot of the injustice. You get to whether they're in <coughs> interpersonal relations or on a broader uh, social scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I think, you know, when we started, people, first of all, people didn't listen. It was very marginalized as this, fem this group of feminists. Then it was like, this is crazy and dangerous, you know, this is going to lead to bad things for people. And for it was therapists. trivialized. It was serious. trivialized, yeah. yeah, it wasn't important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then people started to say, we knew this all along. Mm -hmm. You know, we've known this yeah. forever. What's new about this? So I think a lot of it has been assimilated. I would say that, you know, one of the some of the power of this work originally actually was when we went out and started presenting it in the world, um, people would say to us, therapists and others would say, oh, this is what I've always known in my heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah. always knew yeah. this was the way to do it, but I, was, I never could speak up. Mm -hmm. I could never say it because people would say, what's the matter with her? That's not the way you do therapy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think that I feel in some ways there's a lot of work that's been done in the area of shifting therapy and shifting our understanding of women and shifting our understanding of the power of connection in all people's lives. That's the other thing I want to mm -hmm. say is that it's, yeah. this is about women, but it's also about right. all people's people. yearning mm -hmm. yeah. for connection. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I think that really our next step is really in a way going back to the beginning, mm -hmm. which was Jean talking about social injustice, changing society, 
to really get away from this individualistic and hyper-individualistic model of achievement and competition and, mm -hmm. and everybody go it alone and get back to the power of community, the power of making social change. Um, we have now the Miller Family Social Action mm -hmm. Program, which we're very excited about. Um, and we have working with Project Hope, which we're uh, looking forward to in terms of really bringing this into nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. And that's where I see us going more and more. Mm -hmm. And I feel very ch challenged and excited yeah. about that. I think the good news about assimilation is that yes, there is a wider audience, people are listening, there is some uh, validation to some extent. I think where we have to be careful is that when we discover that at the core uh, there is still this hyper-individualism, that it's, there is still this, it's about me and how to make my project successful. Mm -hmm. So uh, going back to basics is one step and I think that involves looking at the fact that Jean said yes, people grow through connection for the purpose of connection. Yes. It's mm -hmm. not to be a bigger, better individual yes. self who needs nothing and no right. one. Absolutely. Uh, so that's one piece, that's one of the dangers, I think, of the, when, when um, a body, when this kind of thinking gets, starts to get trivialized, it's because it's been diluted, yeah, so it's like diluted in a way, right. so that it, it's, it's uh, more easily digested and more easily co-opted by a power over framework. So I think that's something that we all mm -hmm. always have to be careful about, that this is about community, mm -hmm. this is about mutual encouragement, uh, this is about mutual sharing of power. Mm -hmm. uh, not to deny power differentials, but how do we, how do we use power in ways that are just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so that that people are listened to and heard and effective action is then uh, possible from that. Mm -hmm.